MPLS traceroute behavior. In this video, I'm going to talk about MPLS traceroute and how we can trace a pass in the MPLS networks. You know that in IP routing and in the IP networks, we can use TTL to trace a pass. You know that first we should send a packet with TTL1 that help us discover first router and then we can send a packet with TTL2 that discovers finally the second router and again and again until we reach the destination. In MPLS, we also use this mechanism, but we experience some difference between the MPLS tra trace route and also the IP routing trace route. I want to talk about this type, these topics. Okay, we can use this picture for understanding the MPLS trace route behavior. It's easy, but you should notice carefully to understand all of the functions. First, I want to show you what is happening when you send, when you do trace route. For example, in this scenario, we have five rotor, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and also two PCs, PC1 and PC2. Assume that in PC1, I type, for example, PC1, I type trace root or trace RT, and then the IP address of PC2, 192.168.550. This is the command I used in the PC1. I want to understand and to show you that what is happening now. Okay. And also, you know that in this scenario, in some parts, we have MPLS connections. For example, between PC1 and R1, we have IP routing. And between R1 and R2, we have MPLS neighborship or MPLS configuration. Also between R2 and R3 and between R3 and R4. And finally between R4 and R5 and between R5 and PC2, IP routing is available. This means that the R1 is the HLSR. Okay. You understand this name. And also R5 is HLSR. Other routers, R2 is LSR, is LSR. And again, R3 is LSR. And then R4 is LSR. Okay. Now we want to understand what is happening when you type trace route. You know that in Cisco routers, when you are using trace route or trace RT, it sends a packet with TTL, it sends a UDP packet to the unused ports and with the TTL of one, and then increments the TTL after the first packet's response is received. And again and again, we increase the TTL. Finally, the response from the destination is receiving. And after that, we can sh uh, check the pass or uh, discover the pass. Okay, let's check in. As you can see in the first step, this is the first step. PC1 generate and sends a UDP packet to the unused port. The source IP is the IP of PC1, 192.168.150, and it uses TTL1. Why? Because this is the first packet of trace route, and it wants to discover the first router or default gateway. Destination is 192.168.550. This is the IP address of PC2, and we want to discover the pass between 192.168.150 and 192.168.550. Because of that, it sends a packet with TTL1. Okay. And the packet receives received to the R1. And R1, after check the TTL value, understand that TTL for forwarding the packet, TTL should be decreased to zero. And because of that, R1 discards the packet and send 
a IC and ICMP error message. You know that this is the time. This is the TTL exceeded message with ICMP type 11 and code zero. I showed you in the previous video this packet and the packet, the error packet, the maximum TTL exceeded packet came back, sent back to PC1 and PC1 now can understand the first router, can discover the first router 192.168.11 is the source IP of the packet and it's the IP address of router R1. Because of that, PC1 understand the first router. Now in PC1, you can see the first device that PC1 discovers. Because of that, in PC1, you see this information. The first device is 192.168.11. This is the first. And the process repeats again with increasing TTL to 2. Okay? TTL now is 2 and packet for is forwarded, is sent from R the from PC1 to R1 as a default gateway. The packet is a UDP packet. Source IP is the IP of PC1, destination IP is IP of PC2, and TTL is 2. R1 receives the packets, and R1 should forward the packet into the MPLS network because R1 receives a un an, un an unlabeled packet, it uses FIB. With FIB, R1 forwards the packet because of that. R1 should decrease, decrease, decrease the TTL of IP packet. Because of that, you can see that IP, TTL of IP packet decreased to 1. And because the packet is now labeled, the MPLS TTL is also set to 1. This is the, this is the TTL of uh, MPLS and, on uh, and the top label is the TTL of IP. Both of them is 1. The packet is received to R2 and R2 check the label. First the TTL is checked and R2 understands that TTL is 1 and should the MPLS TTL is 1 and should be decreased to 0 because of that R2 discards the packet. But here an interesting thing is happen is happening what is that in ip network as you remember in the r1 when the packet data packet is received to a router with a router and router discards the packet it directly sends back a, an icmp error message to the source such as r1 R1 sends ICMP error message directly back to the PC1. But in an ICM in the MPLS networks, R2 cannot send the packet, the error packet uh, directly to PC1. Why? I should give you some information about this, but this information will be complete in the future of your MPLS learning way. Let's give you some interesting information. MPLS has many applications. One of its application is the IPv4 over MPLS. This is the MPLS you are understanding now. You are understanding now the first and the fundamentals of the MPLS. We call it IPv4 over MPLS. But MPLS has many applications. For example, MPLS Layer 3 VPN or MPLS Layer 2 VPN. These are all applications of the MPLS or maybe MPLS TE, Traffic Engineering, and some other applications, some other famous applications of the MPLS. I want to say you, in most of the MPLS applications, we have a, a special situation. What is that? Look at here. For example, R1, R2, R3, 